sleep, my pretty. I'm the chef and owner of Rock Lobster Restaurants, the proud author of best-selling cookbook called The Great Lobster Cookbook, and the founder of Maddie's Seafood Brand. We've got a couple shows out there as well, which is great. Super Snack Brothers on Food Network. I'm Chef Matt Dean Pettit of Rock Lobster Restaurants. You can ask me anything. Everyone wants to know if I'm single. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. Ask me. Ask me. You can ask me anything. Where did I get the idea for Rock Lobster? It actually came. Uh, I was out on a East Coast road trip for a buddy's wedding. I was in Miramichi, New Brunswick and I just was surrounded by fresh seafood and we have great oyster places that we celebrate, but nobody was really doing with lobster or shellfish, crab and so forth. And I wanted to make it a place where you could come in, loud music, very approachable from a price point and also of offering on the table. And you know, seafood should be eaten fun and friendly with your family and friends and that's how Rock Lobster was born. What questions do people always ask you? You know what, probably the number one question is, are you sick and tired of eating lobster and seafood? And I would have to say the answer is probably no. Um, it's good to take a bit of breaks. Surprisingly, I've been on a bit of a tofu run right now, trying to get a little healthy. I know, it's crazy, but it's true. Try it, it's very good. How did you perfect your famous giant Caesar, which definitely lives up to the hype? Let me show you how to make it. Big tall glass, so if you're at home, at the end of the day, what you wanna do, you wanna make sure to have, you know, a big glass. If you're gonna enjoy Caesar, put in a big glass. So, you deserve it. A Little bit of fresh lemon. What you're doing is just creating a little bit of a, you know, a liquid to pick up. So we're gonna rim it. The key with a Caesar is you always wanna rim it. You gotta have a beautiful, beautiful rim. So, on ours, we do a little Montreal steak spice, which is really, really nice. A Little bit of ice, and it's like anything, with building a cocktail, Fancy mixologists with the great little beards and you know the fancy suspenders and stuff. The great and the key to a great cocktail is ice. You want to make sure to you know three quarters away, if almost to the top with ice. We've got Worcestershire and a little bit of our uh, secret horseradish. I like to do around two or three little pops, depending on if you want to do it hot. I like to use premium kettle one vodka. So at the end of the day, you know other vodkas are fine. You know alternatively you could do. You know, rye, you can do rum, you can do tequila, a lot of people do. That's a two ounce pour. I wanna add a little bit of spice. So we've got three different ones. You can do jalapeno, we can do chipotle, or we can do Tabasco style. In this case, I like to do chipotle. It's a little more smoky. It's gonna be a nice little one, two, three, four. A little more? Sure, why not? Okay. Get wild up in here. Did you know where the Caesar was invented? Calgary, in the mid 70s by a bartender out there. So it's known as Canada's cocktail. owning a seafood restaurant, very Canadiana, fitting to have a very Canadiana drink. So, fresh celery, of course. We're gonna put a little bit of fresh lime. Our other lemon that we've reserved here as well. And as we talked about, got everybody excited at home. A little East Coast Canadian lobster tail garnished. That's gonna just change everything for you there. And we've got our hot sauces. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the best Caesar in Canada that I present to you, the Rock Lobster Caesar. I think we've won pretty much all the Caesar awards you can win from best cocktail, especially locally and then across Canada, which is great. Cheers. Will you try, uh -huh. will you try the Mick Lobster sandwich? Great question. I have tried it and I can't knock it. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good sandwich. Can you show me how to cook a shockingly easy seafood dish that will wow my friends? Yes, I can. Okay, so we've got our beautiful, delicious summer corn. It's Ontario. Sweetness, you know what I mean, we're gonna do? We're gonna put a little bit of olive oil on it. You can do that with alternatively with butter. If you wanna use something like coconut uh, oil as well, if you're trying to be a little healthy. You know, sometimes like me, trying to lean out here, hence the black shirt, trying to look a little more slim on camera. So we're gonna butter that up, or oil it up, pardon me which is great. So we'll do up two corns. We're gonna go right on the grill. Again, alternatively, you can do this at home on the barbecue. 
So you just want to hear that. That's nice. You're going to get some grill marks going there. So we're going to leave that. There's no really set time, but you know what I mean? You want to get a bit of grill marks. You want those natural caramelization to happen on the corn so it's nice and sweet. What we're going to do is we're going to take our corn. We're going to build it. We're going to put our snow crab beautifully just sitting all over top of it. Beautiful, beautiful Cape Breton Atlantic snow crab. My restaurants are called Rock Lobster, but at the end of the day, maybe don't tell everybody, but this is going to be seen. I'm a big, big sucker for crab. Got a nice little hot sauce. You know, you can use any of your favorite hot sauces. We make our own in the restaurant, which is great. There's three different kinds of hot sauce. It all depends on your style. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna integrate that into the, we've made a, uh, an aioli right here. So we're gonna integrate that in. Just gonna add a nice little, a little sweetness and a little bit of heat there. Oh, you know what a nice little trick is? Is take a little Ziploc bag, pop it into a little Ziploc bag and cut a corner and you can use that as a piping bag at home. It works just as well. So we got a nice little shake going on here. What would you be doing if you weren't a chef? I would love to be a sportscaster. I would love to be like on TSN or something like that. Here's the payoff pitch. Batista, Grand Slam Salami. That's a walk off, ladies and gentlemen. Jose Batista with his 34th home run of the season. Tip your hat, touch them all. It'd be great to have a cold beer or something here too, right? This is supposed to be an easy, fun, summer sort of recipe that we're doing. So I think we're ready to go on our corn. We're gonna pull that off. Okay, which is great. So that is beautiful. And look at those marks, they're just wonderful there. Okay, so you've got your grilled corn. That's got beautiful caramelization on it. We've got all the flavor locked in. That's the kicker right there, right? So you know what we're gonna do too? On the barbecue, I love, I love a little bit of grilled lemon. It adds a nice little smokiness, a sweetness. So you could do that alternatively in a frying pan if you wanted, just to get a little caramelization on the top. It's almost like a nice sear. Okay, so you just want to season the corn with a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. And of course, don't forget your spicy little mayo aioli sauce here, okay? I want to hit it with a little bit of uh, my Maddie's Seafood Seasoning Sauce and spice, so what you could do, if you don't have this at home, it's traditionally like a very similar uh, seafood traditional sauce, and seafood spice, sorry. So you just wanna give it a nice little one-two. You can be a little bit liberal here. So we have our dressed corn. Now the piece de resistance, so we talk about, this is a seafood place, we're talking seafood all day with you. We've got our beautiful, beautiful Cape Breton Atlantic snow crab. So we've already picked that. We are just going to keep that and integrate that onto the plate and you can just break that up. It doesn't that look good? Like, check that out. Like, that is, you know, again, you can keep some of this back. Taste, 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 right? My mom would have yelled at me there for talking with my mouth full. I'm sorry, mom. Let's hit this with a, just a touch more hot sauce. Just to be cute. A little bit of chopped chive. Corn. Corn. And just to make sure that you've got this propped up, you've got your beautiful lemon. And if you need to sneak one on the back side, just underneath, you've got an extra here too. So guys, as you can see, that is one of the most simple, easiest, ridiculously simple, easy seafood dishes you can make at home to impress anybody. Couple steps, let it sing. You want the hero of the, the dish being the crab to sing and let it you know, shine through. I hope you guys enjoy, check it out. Have I ever made seafood desserts and is it possible? One, it is possible. Two, yes I have. Um, you know, we do a lobster rock candy. So picture like a sucker with little shreds of uh, beautiful sweet lobster. And the other one being lobster ice cream. Sounds crazy, but vanilla bean and lobster go hand in hand. Trust me, try it before you knock it. Give it a whirl. What is my favorite item on my menu and why? Hi, 
I'm Chef Matt Dean Pettit of Rock Lobster Restaurant. You can ask me anything. Dumbest foodie trend. <laughs> kale? No, I don't know. Um, I say that jokingly, but like truthfully, I now find myself eating tons of kale. A lot of people are haters. I truthfully am not a hater from a food side because as a restaurateur and a chef, you know, whether it be social media or these buzz iconic foods, like we need them, I need them. I need people to be energetic and, and positive about food, right? And I'd rather them talk about food than politics. So that's the way I look at it. So my favorite recipe is called the Boss, and it's a cold seafood tower, cooked seafood with some raw, beautifully shucked oysters. Why the Boss, you ask? I'm a huge Bruce Springsteen fan. When you bring something big, to, big ass to the table, it's gotta be called the Boss. So let's get into it. So, one level of ice, two level of ice, and then we'll bring in a third afterwards that we'll work through and keep it all sort of integrated and we'll start building these. Okay, so we have beautiful East Coast oysters. These are Karaket oysters from New Brunswick. Minerally briny. Beautiful um, shrimp that we've got here as well. Our East Coast, Nova Scotia lobster tails, our Cape Breton snow crab. So we can sort of start building things as we go. So we're gonna start first with our shrimp. So these are actually called Selva shrimp and they're from Vietnam, but they're the only ocean-wise approved shrimp on the market. So we wanna load those up. So we're due, we wanna, this is the boss. So you've gotta load it up. So we've got this beautiful setting right here. Yes, one, two, three. I'm just gonna transfer that out. We talked about the oysters. So people get scared to sometimes do oysters at home. You know, you just wanna make sure that you've got a bit of a sharp knife. You don't need the fancy glove here. I don't know if you've done it at home, but just be careful. So essentially you just wanna get under and in and pop and slide, cut the inductor muscle. Next step, always taste. So you know right away if the oyster's off. So spin it towards your mouth. You'll know at home if the oyster's off, trust me. It smells uh, not too pleasant. And you just wanna let that sit. So we can do a bunch of these. Quickly down what we got here. What menu item did I think was gonna be huge based on what I like and nobody ordered? Uh, when we first opened uh, about three years ago, we were all in that whole, you know, I thought I was ahead of the curve with the chicken and waffles thing. So we did two beautiful waffles, beautiful brine, 24 hour buttermilk chicken, almost like our own sort of style of K KFC sort of ish uh, breading, delicious. Uh, and for whatever reason, it just didn't fly, you know, and pardon the pun. Uh, it didn't fly. Maybe this being a seafood place, it just didn't move. And uh, so we had to take it off. We ate it a lot. We had a lot of staff meals with it. Our team loved it. I loved it, but yeah, it just didn't work. So let's get that away. Looks lovely, looks lovely. Bottom row. Top row coming up. All right. I might have to get a booster seat to get on here. This is a big one. And throw a little bit of crab action. A little bit of crabby. Get crabby with me. There we go. So, boom. Imagine this coming to your table in my restaurant. You are gonna freak out. Top, top, top tier. So we're gonna go, we've got our beautiful tails. You know, you can place these. Like a little bit of love. I'm gonna throw a couple more of these on for good measure. Bring that around. A little bit of lemon, of course. So we've got our delicious, beautiful, fresh lemon. Just cut that into a few nice pieces. Like so, all right? And like so. Best tip to get a little seafood off your hands is a little bit of fresh lemon. Put in a little bit of a warm water you want and uh, it's just the best way it's gonna sort of take it off as uh, and that's one thing that I definitely suffer from generally speaking is a lot of seafood hands so we've got some fresh beautiful flat leaf parsley okay let's get sexy here let's get real I'm gonna pop in a couple sauces let's go chipotle and let's go a little bit of jalapeno today 
little jalapeno. So you probably still can't see me, but maybe you can. But ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my favorite recipe in my restaurant, Rock Lobster, the Boss Seafood Tower. What is the best way to incorporate lobster into a meal if you're on a tight budget? You don't have to always use a full lobster. Use the tail, cut it, break it down into medallions, which are like little, you know, cylinders and pieces. Use it for a beautiful caprese salad. Use it in a stir fry. You know, but you can buy lobster tail nowadays for, you know, three, four bucks when it's on sale. You know, that's cheaper than sometimes buying pork or chicken. Of all of the recipes of the Great Lobster Cookbook, which one is your favorite? Which one means the most? So you wanna know my favorite recipe from my cookbook, my banging coconut curry lobster dish. So there's a few different ways you can do this. You know, we've got our lucky lobster right here, Larry the Lobster. I've gotta say, I'm actually raised by two hippies and we do do a lot of lobster dishes in the restaurant. I've gotta tell you, and don't feel bad at home, if you're gonna be cooking this, lobsters actually do not feel pain. So there's no central nervous system in them. So don't be afraid. If you do hear, if you're gonna boil it and you hear a little bit of a noise coming out, it's actually just the gas and releasing from the shell itself. So just to repeat, don't feel bad if you're doing this. If you actually want a little tip and you wanna do it at home and you're gonna cook a full lobster and you're gonna steam it or boil it and you don't want it screaming and moving around from you and I, and I apologize for using the word screaming but releasing gas from its shell, you can actually lay a little tip. You can actually lay a lobster on its backside and within about two to three minutes, maybe even shorter, depending on if you got a lazy lobster, you can actually have it sort of in a bit of a catatonic state where it actually won't move around. Sleep, sleep my pretty. We're gonna use lobster tails. So for the speed of time, I've actually pre-prepped these already. So you can either steam them or you can boil them, you can grill them. I've actually steamed these. So what I did is we put a pot previously on, we have our steaming rack, we put a little bit of about two inches of water, we created a little bit of steam, covered it. And what you wanna do is you wanna let those sit for about, in a, in a tail this size, it's about six to seven minutes. The one thing with lobsters, you do not want to overcook it. We've got a hot pan, we're gonna start this up. So let's keep that going, we're gonna build that up. Just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of canola oil. Beautiful. So we're just gonna drop that through. So we're gonna build our stock, we're gonna build our base. So we've got some garlic. So again, just fresh garlic, just wanna crush it. We'll keep a few here, we'll probably do three cloves, you know. Always use the back of the knife just to throw a little, a little smash on that. That's gonna go right into the hot pan, which is great. Okay, so garlic's down, just a little bit of onion. I like to use uh, red onion, it's got a little sweetness to it. You can of course use uh, white onion if you want it as well too. Okay, let that sit. So we've got two cups of coconut milk going in. And what you want to do is you just want to reduce that down. So you'll just let that sit and reduce. Okay, so you've got your beautiful coconut milk. As you can see, that's just reducing down. You know, we've cut that by about half. We're going to add, so three different kinds of spices, so to speak. We've got our beautiful curry. We're going to add a little bit of cumin and a little bit of turmeric. Turmeric is actually the coloring agent that's in curry, uh, curry paste itself or curry powder, pardon me. So one tablespoon. A lot of that, you know, a little bit of that goes a long way. We're gonna do half a, tea, half a tablespoon of cumin and a touch, same thing, a half a tablespoon of the turmeric. So that's gonna just be absolutely beautiful. And it's, if, I wish you could smell that right now because it's just so vibrant. So we'll just whisk that through. We've got that breaking down. Let's add the lobster, right? That's what we're talking about, the good stuff. Enough about the spices. So we broke down four tails. So we've steamed these. Again, you could throw them in ready to go, but I like to sort of break down and, and lobster cooks really quickly. So, you know, we just wanna make sure that we're just gonna bring these back up to heat because we've already cooked these through. So at this point, you know, we're gonna keep that down for about five to seven minutes. We'll just let those flavors sort of infuse and cook down. It's gonna be really, really beautiful. And then we're gonna plate and away we go. The million dollar question, uh, do I find running restaurants stressful?
of all of the recipes of the Great Lobster Cookbook, mm -hmm. which one is your favorite? Which one means the most? Weave their eyes, so it's all about keeping it nice and sexy. And I call this dish the banging coconut curry lobster tail dish because banging, it's got that kick, it's got that punch. You know, you got that little bit of heat on the back end. It's got the sweetness, it's got the richness in there. This is an expression of Thailand and one of my great inspirations. One of my favorite, if not my favorite recipe from the Great Lobster Cookbook, my cookbook. And I hope you enjoy it. Simple, easy steps. Bon appetit. How do you make a cheap fish taste good? Uh, you know what I think, how do you make a, a, a cheap fish? So maybe the word cheap's not the best, but maybe like inexpensive. So inexpensive or value, you know, price fish. Um, I would say make it. So if you, again, if you like a, things really spicy or you like a Cajun spice, if you want it on a nice, you know, in a, in a stir fry of some sort, if you want to do it battered as if it's maybe a, a nice fish that you can deep fry, you know, like a white fish, I think it's adapting and doing it what style you like. So if you want to, you know, if you want to make fish cakes and you love like, you know, deep fried things, make fish cakes, roll them up, put it in, make fish cakes, put some cheese in there, pecorino, make a little boom, throw a little sauce. Now you got something wild and you got a little fun party going on. The million dollar question. Uh, do I find running restaurants stressful? Uh, yeah, every, every chef restaurateur, uh, every front of house, every back house, any person that works in a restaurant will say yes, it is. It's a very um, you know, high energy, high stress environment, but it's a lot of fun at the same time. And it is a labor of love. I try to decompress, probably my, you know, my favorite thing to do is sort of walk through Kensington Market and just sort of zone out, see some buddies, chill out, maybe grab a couple beers on a patio and just sort of decompress. We're at Thomas Labors here in Kensington Market. So you have Ty Thomas, you have Brian Labors here down on the end, two buddies of mine. These guys make beautiful, you know, fresh cured meats in house. You know, what they're best known for, it's now become actually North American and world famous, is their ginger beer. No, you don't. <laughs> no, we, uh, beer for you. cheers, brother. And a ginger beer for you. Oh, thanks, buddy. Ooh. Sandwich making is thirsty work. Sandwich making is thirsty work. Cheers. <laughs> We have a crazy life, so I think, you know, we like to hang out with people in common and, and people in our industry. We want to hang out with buddies that generally like-mindedness and, and, you know, run in the same circle and... Same schedule. Same schedule, that's yeah. probably one of the biggest things, right? So you know what, I think, as they say, and it sounds so cliche, but it's true, like, if you, if you think that, you know, you don't uh, really have to go to work every day, it never feels like you are working. You know, I don't really feel like I have a job. I feel like I'm hanging out with friends, I work every day, I work hard every day, but it feels like, you know, it's just I'm doing it because I love it. So it, uh, it comes easy. Mm -hmm.